What's happening everybody? This is Theo from Theo's Pets and this, this is Tsunade and this is a female lesser ball python. Uh, so let's watch the intro, talk about her and a couple of other happenings going on in the room, shall we? Alright, so this beautiful lady here is a lesser ball python. Now, the uh, breeder that I got her from thinks there might be some cinnamon or some chocolate in here also, but that's really not going to be able to uh, really come to light until they've been bred out. So, um, I have a super lesser, or well they were sold to me as a honey lesser, which is Iota. I'll link a uh, card to the video about them here. Um, I love bells. I've seen some random variation of bells, pastel bells, Mojave bells, that kind of thing. So I'm really wanting to start working with that. Um, and so getting a lesser was definitely the first step towards that. So um, my lesser was sold as a male. I've yet to pop them and see. Uh, but regardless of that, based on uh, another snake I'm about to show you that we've gotten here soon, it won't matter if they're male or female anyway. So, this pretty lady here came from Casa de Loki, which I will put, uh, I have actually their logo here, I did some video clips for him. Um, so, if you guys are looking for gargoyles, crested geckos, ball pythons, definitely check him out. He does some awesome, awesome animals and is chock full of good information. Um, so, let's see, Miss Sonata here, he apparently, she might have already been uh, impregnated by, she's been paired and he saw locked with two other males before I got her. Um, I believe one was like a VIP Kingpin GHI and honestly I don't I don't remember but we'll see uh, what happens with all of that here and uh, I'll get back to you so I'm gonna get mama here back on her heat mat and so uh, I guess the next one I'm gonna show you is gonna be Neji since we're talking about lessers so let's go ahead and grab him shall we so this shy little guy right here is Neji. Now Neji is a pastel Mojave so and there might be something else going on in there but this is what they were sold to me as. Uh, so the cool thing about Neji here he's a male um, and Tsunade the lesser I just showed you is a female so if I made them we still get bells. So regardless on how my bell itself sexes out male or female we should be in the good to make bells as it stands. So he's a, a little more shy and timid than she is, but he's been timid since we got him. He's absolutely gorgeous though. He does this crazy thing where he puffs air up in his head like a puffer fish and makes his little head almost completely round. He's not really doing it now. Uh, he seems he's a little more comfortable with me than with my wife there. But and this is technically supposed to be her cuddle buddy of a snake, so they're working on it, but what's up, buddy? He is just absolutely gorgeous. Now I know he's still a little small to breed, but like I said, she has already been paired for season, so realistically, it's gonna be a minute before uh I would try to pair her with him anyway. We should give us more than enough time to get up to weight. Um, so speaking of which, I'm going to use that to transition into the next snake we got, which is a male. Again, he is about 200 grams shy of being breed and ready. Um, but he is gorgeous and definitely one of my favorites. His name is Minato. Um, let's get him and we'll talk about him, shall we? Would you like to say bye, Neji? Let's look at the camera, say bye. Say bye, buddy. Now 
this. And this is my boy, Minato. So Minato is a Coral Glow, 100% Het for G-Stripe, 50% Het Clown, 50% Het Ghost. So what that means is that I have some heads to prove out. Um, I've got two friends with some clown stuff that are going to be willing to let me mate him uh, to try to prove out that head. Uh, we'll split eggs of course. But I don't know anybody with some ghost stuff going on. So I might end up having to break down and buy myself a ghost female here at some point. Um, because this is just an absolutely gorgeous gorgeous boy and if i can prove out to triple hit this will be a star in the little bit of ball python breeding that i do not much as y'all have all seen and probably noticed from the channel we work mostly with crested but we have a little bit more stuff going on um obviously ball pythons i've been i've got a nice little collection of corn snakes over here for my personals uh in the nice rack here um i've got a sun-kissed ghost uh, that I'm thinking about mating out to another Sunkiss Ghost because it'll make exclusively Sunkiss Ghost. Um, we have a Fire Morph. And um, then I've got two really nice Oketees. Uh, but really, I'm just thinking about working on the Sunkiss Ghost. And I was looking at a normal Het Palmetto, but if we decide to let all that happen, we'll do that. Talk about that in a different video. Um, I've also got, come January, I'm going to start setting up and gearing up to do some Poison Dark Frog. So that'll be fun. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned and check out for that coming. But right now, let's talk about these ball pythons. Now, Monado here, like I said, hopefully will prove out to be a triple het, which will be G-Stripe, Clown, and Ghost in this Coral Glow. Now, this Coral Glow starts off uh, without a lot of these spots and stuff here. Um, what you'll have mostly is this like pale yellowish pink snake, and where all of these uh, color markers here, they glow, they're a little vibrant. As the snake gets older, the pattern does tone down a little bit and they develop all of these nice freckles and spots. They look very similar to bananas. So similar in fact, I've heard people have a hard time being able to differentiate between the two. Um, one of the only big deciding factors is that this coral glow gene is sex linked, meaning that because mine is a male, any coral glows that we have are male. Um, anything that doesn't express coral glow will be female. It makes that pretty easy. So, uh, when I got this guy, I was told they were not socialized, but as you can see, we are just the biggest puppy dog. We're actually in blue right now, uh, which makes us a little nervous and agitated, so I'm not going to have them out too, too much longer. Uh, the only issue with this one and Neji, who I got from the same person, is apparently they both eat live. So, we're going to try to switch them to Frozen Thawed, but being that they're already this old and still eating live, I feel like that's probably about where we're going to be with it. Which is fine. So, I'm going to go get Mr. Minato put back. And then we have some other new stuff in the room to check out that I didn't get to in the Crested Gecko update video. So, let's talk about those other two animals, shall we? Alright. So, next up on the list is Franklin. So, Franklin is a Tostito tortoise. I believe Tostito Grecia, to be specific. Which just means that it is from uh, the Greece area in the Mediterranean. Um... Franklin here is something my daughter has been having a fit for every time we see one. I mean, literal panic attacks at point. So, we saw this guy, uh, unfortunately, not very well uh, humidicized. So, here we are. Now, the good thing about the Tostito here is they should only get about 5 to 8 inches, which is definitely houseable and manageable. Um, if you know what you're getting into, that's not saying that this thing needs a small... Uh, enclosure by any shape, form, or fashion. In all actuality, I ended up, uh, well, it kind of worked out. So I was moving some stuff around and I ended up breaking my bookcase. Um, and so, well, I ripped all the shelves out and used the giant wood box uh, from the bookcase for Franklin's new habitat. So I have a whole five shelf bookcase worth of stuff to figure out where I'm going to put it now. Um, but we have a Franklin. So my daughter's happy, which means I'm happy, so there we are. But what's up, little Franklin? Uh, from my understanding, there's no real way to tell how old exactly they are. However, they live uh, in captivity, from what I read, 50 to 100 years. So this thing is going to outlive me. Uh, it might even outlive Karna, my daughter there. 
So, but we've only had them for a couple of days. Uh, we're doing good though. We took a bath today. We loved it. We've already eaten some chicory. Uh, we've eaten some dandelions. We're doing great. So, Franklin. Uh, I guess while I have Franklin, we'll talk about the other new pet because, well, for starters, I haven't handled them yet. I'm a little nervous. Uh, and they're also eating currently. So, we got a pink toe tarantula. Uh, I named her Matilda. It's an avicularius avicularius, I do believe. Um, because I do remember reading that tarantula in the tarantula hobby, you refer to them by their Latin names. So, avicularius avicularius. Um, I will grab some shots of her in the tub. She's eating some crickets right now. She's doing awesome. Uh, two to three crickets every Wednesday like a champion. Uh, we're growing a little bit. We've not molted yet, but I saw them in the Petco here. And once again, as we talked in the last video, the Petco here, I do believe it's due to the fact that they're using analog um, hydrometers and thermostats, but everything seems to be in, in proper humidity to, to the extent that some of these animals are not looking too hot, like Matilda, the tarantula. She was very, very dried out in an empty little critter keeper um, when I got her. Uh, and so to the point that they sold her to me on sale and they didn't even put her in a cup to take home they gave her to me in the critter keeper and all because none of them wanted to open it to cup her or anything like that so i don't know who what when we was feeding her uh there was no water in her water dish that was in there but now we are thriving um we are in a plastic uh shoebox size container a little bit taller than a shoebox the biggest thing about that though is originally I had them set up in a 10 gallon enclosure with a lot of uh, decorations and obstruction so they could find small spaces to hide in and all of that stuff. We ate fine in there but uh, from reading some more what I figured out about Avicularius Avicularius is a cross ventilation or is that excuse me is that cross ventilation is actually a big aspect with these guys um, and so just having that opening at the top there was not really optimal so I ended up putting them in the plastic so I could do custom ventilation um, and we are absolutely thriving in there so I hope to maybe attempt to handle her at one point um, that's just my own personal fear I don't I have a rational I'm gonna say fear of spiders they don't bother me I'll actually enjoy watching them uh, I just don't like the way it feels when bugs in general move on me I don't know if that makes sense if a bug was right here I don't care if it's crawling on me, I literally just don't like the way it feels when it, all of its legs are moving in unison across me. I don't know how to explain. It's more of a sensation uh, phobia than an actual spider phobia itself. Obviously to the point that I got Miss Matilda who wasn't doing too hot and I'm nursing her back to health because just because I'm horrified of it doesn't mean it deserves to die. Uh, I just have to drive that point home. I have that conversation about snakes all the time. I'm obviously not scared of snakes. I love snakes. But I have to explain to people all the time that just because you're scared of something does not mean you should destroy it. So, gotta love people. But with that being said, Miss Matilda is over there eating some crickets. Love and life. Uh, she is still about 1.52 inches. She's tiny. She can get up to about 5 inches in her entirety. Um, they live, I was told she was a female. So the female, so from what I read, basically the lifespan for males is about 5 years. Females 15 to 20. However, that's because males get eaten during mating. Uh, so I don't know if a male in captivity not mated will last the 10, 15 years like the female. Uh, or if that number is reflective of something else. But from my understanding, the female should live like 10, 15, maybe 20 years if we take care of her properly. So we'll see what happens. So with all that being said, we acquired a whole lot of things that are going to live as long as me this week. Didn't we, Franklin? I love Franklin. Franklin is, like I said, a tortoise. That is one of the first, actually the first reptile I ever had as a child. Looking back as an adult with a tortoise, uh, having done all my research, knowing what I know now, I don't know how my tortoise as a kid didn't die. I love my parents, but this thing was on a heat rock. We didn't give it baths. Uh, I'm pretty sure it just ate lettuce from the grocery store. I think I remember giving it broccoli at one point. I don't know. But anyway, Franklin says hi. Franklin says bye. I'm going to get some shots of Matilda to throw on here, the tarantula. Um, and then I will also throw on some shots of Franklin's bookcase, uh, bookcase enclosure. Just in case anybody wants to check it out and think about this for themselves. Um, now, I will say the bookcase actually ended up working for this size is great. 
for the tortoise now. I do know that Franklin, like I said, we got about five to eight inches, which means that they need a pretty large size enclosure, up to like a four by eight almost. So Franklin's gonna actually be able to free roam the reptile back area of the house with lights set up in an area where they can find it easily access. But we'll get to that when it comes later. I uh, just wanted to specify that tortoises need a lot of room. So as much as these guys are awesome, um, I love Franklin. And as you can see, he's he's actually really good with the baby too. Um, the cool thing with tortoises is as long as you avoid the problem in, they can't really bite you. So it's great for interacting and playing with the child, but it'll live 100 years and some of them get, they need the whole room in your house or it needs to live outside. Uh, I've noticed with the Tostitos, the, the Sulcutas and the Russians, they all look very similar and they actually get sold in tanks together and then uh once did you just pee on me funny one no that's on top of your shadow i don't know what that is something i had something on my hand and drip anyway uh they'll all be in our tank together and sold together and then uh your russian tortoise will get about five to eight inches same as little franklin here but also cut a uh, actually starts off smaller than a Russian and by the time it's done will get big enough for my two-year-old to ride on I mean this thing get like upwards of 200 pounds some of these little cut of tortoises so you really got to be super careful with uh, your tortoise purchase and the size requirements and if it's something you can do but if so Franklin says do it so all right guys Franklin Steve Theos Pets have a great day